Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take a look at the HP NVX2, the latest transformer style portable from HP, running Windows 8 obviously, 1.5 pound tablet here, and you get a keyboard dock, all comes together, all as one, one of the nicest that we've seen so far, running on Intel Atom CPU with full Windows 8, and we're going to look at it now. So here's the HP NVX2, it looks like a normal small notebook computer, doesn't it? It's 11.6 inches, all aluminum frame construction here, very nice quality, island style keyboard, good synaptics, trackpad, touch screen, 1366 by 768 IPS, pretty bright, HP claims it's 400 nits, we're seeing it more like 350 but still quite bright, but here's the trick, and you know this from ASUS Transformers, everybody's been copying this, you slide the little latch that's right over here, and you can undock it and pop it right out. And it's got two little holes here that have locators that go in from the keyboard dock, and this is the proprietary connector where you can plug in to charge it, and that's where the dock interface is. This weighs 1.5 pounds, very thin, very light, about the same weight as iPad, so definitely not a burden if you want to use this just as a tablet, unlike convertibles that can weigh around 3 pounds or so. And if we take a look at the dock here, you can see what the surface is like that it mates to. Very large, durable hinge here, and we've got these two long prongs that go inside the tablet itself, and then there's the male dock connector right there. This is your sliding release latch. Now if we look at it from the side, you can see it's a pretty beefy thing right here, this whole construction. And when you rotate back, obviously this props the notebook up for a little bit better typing angle as well. Quite stiff, quite sturdy, and also the tablet locks into here very nicely. We've seen a whole lot of Transformer designs, including Asus's own, the Transformer Prime models, and you couldn't really pick it up from the display because they would just separate. This guy really locks together well, very easy to use locking mechanism, very easy to unlock. It's so far the best yet. In fact, overall, this guy's a little bit more expensive than some of the Windows 8 Atom tablets on the market, but you're getting definitely a better quality piece, where some feel a little bit more like toys, either because they're quite small at 10.1 inches with keyboards that are just about impossible to use, or they lack the proper balance, the, that is the display section is too heavy, so this falls over, that kind of thing. No, not with this. This feels just like a nice Envy product like the Spectre XT. So right here we've got all aluminum right here. Trackpad has a definite border around it, so you'll feel if you've wandered off of it. It's a buttonless trackpad. A little bit of texture here, you really can't see it, but it feels a little like swirled aluminum. Roomy Island style keyboard here, well as roomy as you can get for 11.6 inches, but it's quite nice to type on. Reasonable key travel, of course it's going to be a little bit shallow because this is a fairly thin product. Good tactile feel, the only thing you're not going to get here is backlighting. On these transformer style products where the keyboard separates from the tablet, you just don't get backlighting so far. And again, this is sold together as a bundle, so you get the tablet and you get the dock. It's not a separate purchase. Together, the list price is $849, which is a little bit steep, though we're already seeing HP having it on special for $749 in some retailers as well. Right here, full-size HDMI port, USB 2.0 port, and we've got our headphone jack right there. And on this side, we have a full-size SD card slot. It's got a little blank in it. It's compatible with SDXC cards up to 64 gigs in capacity. Another USB 2.0 port, and this is where the charger plugs in. It uses a notebook style charger, a very compact one. Bottom, all aluminum again, little rubber feet here. Nice wedge shaped design, pretty fashionable that is now. And this is what your charger looks like. Again, it's a very, like, really compact notebook style charger here. Plenty of cord length on it. Three prong connector on the end for us US folks who use this kind of plug. Tablet itself, again, this is where the docking locators go. That's where the docking connector itself is. This little thing you almost would miss at the bottom is a micro SD card slot. A little dummy card right in there, too. Again, compatible with SDXC cards. And over here on the bottom, on placement, we have the 3.5 millimeter combo stereo headphone mic jack. So that means when you dock it, if you've got headphones plugged in, you're going to unplug them and plug them into the headphone jack that's on the dock instead. That's a little bit strange design. Don't know why HP did that. Very thin. It's got a little bit of a rubber lip here, and that's to protect the display when it closes against the keyboard. Nice fit and finish, very well put together, no strange gaps, no creaks. 
Good looking overall. And you notice there's no USB port built onto the tablet itself. If you want to use those USB ports, you're going to have to dock it into the keyboard. Now if we take a look at the back here, lots of aluminum to look at. Nice shiny aluminum, good looking, modern, kind of businessy, but also slightly stylish, big HP logo there. Here's your 8 megapixel camera with LED flash, fairly high megapixel rating for a Windows tablet, and actually takes pretty decent pictures in 1080p video. And on the back, here's where the power button is, right there on the edge. So, it reminds me of the Motorola Zyboard a little bit. They expect you to reach around and try to find it by feel a little bit strange, a little bit awkward there. And there are volume controls over here, and there's also volume controls on the keyboard, and you can use on-screen volume controls as well, so lots of ways to control your volume there. Standard for Windows 8's tablets, we have the little home button right here, and this vibrates with haptic feedback. If you press it, when you're using the on-screen keyboard, there is no haptic, so that's kind of interesting there. And up here you can see the Beats Audio logo. You know, HP loves that Beats Audio, and honestly, I can't hear anything special about the audio on this tablet when just using the built-in little speakers. It's a little device. It's 11.6 inches. It's just a tablet. It's not hugely loud. It's enough to fill a small room, and the sound is kind of thin, not very bass-heavy. Now, if you plug in some headphones, it all is good. It sounds great, or some external stereo speakers, but honestly, I would not have labeled this Beats Audio if I was HP. We have our 1366 by 768 resolution IPS display here, very good viewing angles, nice colors, plenty reflective and glossy, alas, but it's bright enough to combat that. And I'm not going to complain about the resolution. I really think that 1080p is a little bit overkill. Honestly, it's very readable, and when you're in desktop mode, you don't have to do things like enlarge all of your icons and, and your text, actually, just to read things. And it's very sharp looking. Even looking at something like Zinio magazines with tiny text is quite sharp. So, very nice quality display here. So you can see, this is Windows 8 with act actual access to the Windows desktop, and unlike Windows RT, you can do more here than use Office 2013 RT and the File Manager. If you want to install your Windows 7 applications on here, you can. You can install Photoshop, you can install Corel Painter, whatever it is that you want to put on this guy. Now, this is an Intel Atom CPU, Clover Trail 1.8 GHz dual core, same as we've seen on a couple of other tablets like the Acer Iconia Tab. W510, the Samsung Ative 500T that we looked at, and then there's also the ASUS VivoTab 810C. Most of those are 11.6 inch. In the case of the Acer, it's a 10.1 inch tablet, but all the same idea. So like all those tablets, yes, you can run Windows apps. No, they're not going to run really quick, though. This is an Intel Atom CPU of netbook fame. Granted, it's the latest generation. It's a bit more clever. Intel GMA graphics, not going to get you serious 3D gaming going on here. Sorry, no World of Warcraft, don't bother with Steam. But yes, you can do some light photo editing with Photoshop. Uh, you, you can do things like transcode video for iTunes, but you know it's going to take about four times longer than it would on an Ultrabook with a Core i5 CPU. Which gets to who's this product for? This is for somebody who wants to do MS Office work. They want to use all the new Windows 8 built-in live tile applications. You can use Outlook on this guy. Again, light image editing. You can stream video. It plays 1080p video just fine. It plays Netflix very well. It does all those things. YouTube, no problem. It has Adobe Flash built in, so you've got that. You've got your Amazon Prime video. But it's not for somebody who does a lot of HD video editing, uh, works with absolutely huge spreadsheets, trying to do matches and sorts and that kind of thing. It's not really meant to be your main computer. This is your mobile companion with a much better than average keyboard right here. Speaking of the keyboard, we're going to dock it in right now. Locks in with a nice solid assured click and you can pick it up just like that. In fact, it looks sort of like an HP DM1. It's clean lines, it looks like a notebook, feels like a small notebook computer. Close it up. That's what it looks like. Interesting hinge here that sticks out a bit. That's what supports the whole tablet there in the dock area. So really, this guy, so far, of, of all the various transformer kind of products out there, really does the best job of making something that works nicely as a notebook. You don't feel like you're making concessions or working with an absolutely tiny keyboard or one that disconnects a lot like the Samsung T500T. And it's wonderful as a tablet, too. 1.5 pounds, great viewing angles, nice balance. So it definitely marries the best of both worlds. So far, better than any other of the transformer Windows 8 tablets that we've looked at. Again, the challenge is you're going to pay more for this. How about digital pen? HP says there will be a digital pen available for this. It does not come in the box. They're going to sell it separately, and they're selling this product, but they're not selling the pen yet. So 
Doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence there. The pen is supposedly made by Amtel, not Wacom, not Entrick. Uh, the last time I saw an Amtel stylus or digital pen, that was on the Motorola Zybor 10.1, and it was a big rubbery tip fat thing that really wasn't very surprise, precise. It supports pressure sensitivity to 256 levels. Now maybe there's something newer that'll be showing up for this guy here, something that's a little bit more usable, but for right now, you graphic artist types, not so much, and no takers until you can get that pen. Now the Acer Iconia Tab W510 doesn't come with a pen either, the Samsung Ative 500T does, unless you get the AT&T version, isn't that confusing? If you get the AT&T version, there is no digitizer and no digital pen going there. Of course, the Asus Vivo Tab TF 810C does come with a Wacom pen as well. And that guy costs even more because that's 850 base price just for the tablet section. Then you're going to pay another 150 for the base section. So actually, this is not the most expensive one on the market quite just yet. One thing that I do like about this compared to the competition is the Acer 510. I liked it a lot. Very compact. Okay, it's a little plasticky, hey, but it's also not a very expensive product. But Something as simple as driver updates, it was just amazing to me that I actually had to go to their website and get them because their driver updater just didn't seem to think most updates were worth applying even though they were really pretty crucially important. And some of them don't even tell you the basics, like you need to plug it in before you can do an update. So I kept trying and it kept failing and it didn't say, hey dummy, plug it in either. So it was just trial and error. ASUS has been pretty slow at the TF. 810C drivers. In fact, people have been getting frustrated with that and loading drivers from Lenovo and HP to try to update their tablet because the Atom-based tablets did have some driver issues out of the gate about a month ago. And lastly, the Ateev 500T from Samsung. Nice tablet. Definitely like the Wacom digitizer and, and the display and all that kind of thing, but the keyboard really was not a very good typing experience. And also, it tends to disconnect a lot from the keyboard dock, whereas this guy just feels much more like a solid monolithic notebook experience. In terms of performance against those competitors, I have to say the HP feels the most stable and the fastest out of the box. Now maybe it helps that they waited the longest to release these. Again, there were some issues with Atom bugs when these products first came out, but it scores about 200 points on PC Mark 07 Benchmark, which is a 1424. That's certainly not going to give any Ultrabook running on a Core i5 a run for its money, but it is 200 points higher than the competition there. It just feels more snappy. I, there were times when I just wanted to, to smack the others when I was using desktop mode particularly, which is more demanding and you're using desktop apps. And this guy just really doesn't lag much. I haven't had problems with the audio disappearing until I reboot and some of the other problems I have with the other tablets. Granted, those problems will probably get ironed out on all of them as driver updates come out, but HP just released something very solid out of the box. It is still an Atom, and you can see our Windows Experience Index score here, which runs up to a maximum of 9.9 these days. Overall score is 3.3. The processor score is 3.4 for your 1.8 GHz dual-core Atom. Memory score is 4.7. Desktop graphics is 3.8. 3D business and gaming graphics is 3.3. And the hard disk score is 5.6, which actually in this case is a flash drive. Now here's something about the Atom. Right now, this is this is what the hardware chipset supports, basically. You get USB 2.0, not 3.0, because Atom doesn't support 3.0, and it uses an eMMC interface for the flash drive. So this is not an SSD with an mSATA interface. This is something slower. You also see that in mobile OS tablets like Android. It's not the end of the world, but that's why you don't get the blazing fast storage scores that you'll see on some Ultrabooks with mSATA SSD drives. It says 2 gigs of RAM, that's the maximum that the Intel Atom can address. So, again, that's going to limit your multitasking. You can run a browser with several tabs open. You can have Word open in the background, too. A couple of things like that, your email checking. But don't expect to be processing some HD video while doing iTunes encoding while having your web browser open. And if you like to play Adobe Flash games, I would limit it to one game at a time in, in a tab. The upside to the Intel Atom... It, it's all the good things that you like about mobile OS tablets, like the iPad and Android tablets. It's a fanless design. This guy runs silent. It runs cool. Even if you're streaming video, it's not going to get hot. It's not going to burn your hand. Standby is also excellent. It uses much less power than Intel Core CPUs do. So I never turn one of these off, really. I just hit the power button, put it to sleep. That's all there is to it. You can close it up, and it's going to put it to sleep as well. It just goes you know, a week, no problem, easily in standby mode. And in terms of battery life, aha, that's another nice thing about the HP. We've got battery inside the tablet, obviously, and we've got another one inside of the keyboard dock. 
So you've got about eight hours or so on in tablet mode right here, and then you get about another four or five hours from the keyboard dock. We're just saying that the Samsung AT 500T lacks as a keyboard dock, but there is no battery inside to extend run times. So in that way, this tablet is a lot more like an iPad or an Android tablet in terms of cool, quiet, long battery life. So far, the only of the Windows 8 Atom Transformers that run longer is the Acer Iconia W510, which goes about an hour longer. It's also running on a 10.1 inch display. It's a smaller display that's going to use less power. The tablet has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgm, that's Broadcom. It has Bluetooth as well, and it has NFC. It does not have a built-in GPS. Currently, there is no 3G or 4G option. Of course, you can use this with a MiFi with a mobile hotspot on your smartphone if you want to. In terms of speed, it does feel very fast. It just is responsive as anything. Camera application is pretty good on this. HP's camera app does a better job taking pictures than the built-in Windows camera application. We've got a webcam up front, 720p for Skype video chat. Not great quality for anything beyond Skype video chat. It's adequate for that. You've got all your usual live tile applications built in here, Internet Explorer. You have it both in the live tile version, which runs full screen, and then the standard Internet Explorer on the desktop, which you can run in a floating window with multiple tabs, all that kind of thing. Microsoft Store is on board for all those Microsoft applications that, that are designed for the live tile interface here, and we have our usual music videos, Xbox games. And we've got the Xbox music player up here. We're just going to stream something for free so you can hear the speakers. So we've got the volume up at around 70 right now. You can hear what the speakers sound like. Again, for an 11.6 inch tablet, it's not bad. It's just not anything that's going to Wow, your friends are amazing. Certainly adequate. It's adequate for watching movies, too. And right now we're streaming this from the Xbox music service. It's pretty good volume. Now we're checking out the video player. Of course, you also have Windows Media Player on this on the desktop if you want, but this guy works for... We started MPEG-4 and WMV files, so we're looking at a 1080p trailer now. Obviously, it exceeds the resolution and display that you can output through HDMI or DLNA if you want. And it's having no trouble playing it whatsoever. Well, I can honestly say I have told you the truth. I've so that's 1080p video playback working well. So how about Flash video playback and YouTube video playback? Right now we have Chrome running here on the desktop side of things. Yes, you can do that, which is pretty cool because we've got full Windows 8 32 bit here. And we're going to take a look at a video review. There it is, streaming just fine. Move up to 720p and go to full screen. And now it's caught up. It's playing just fine. So we're actually using Chrome right now to do this in my browser. So overall, a good performance and a good showing. Again, this is, this is meant to be a secondary machine. Like I said, it's an Intel Atom. This is not the sharpest knife in the box here, but boy, nice keyboard. Everything works together nicely. Everything holds together nicely. Works nicely as a tablet. Just a whole lot of nice, I know, going on there. But for your $750 to $150, you're getting a very usable product here. Now, of course, the only thing is you can get quite a nice laptop for that price, too. Depends. If you want the touchscreen or not, for starters, you're paying for the IPS high-quality touchscreen here and for the separable design. Those things do cost money. That's why this costs more than something like the Asus VivoBook X202, which uses a low-quality T in panel and is not a separable design, no IPS, that kind of stuff. So that's the HP Envy X2. It's available now on HP's website and in retailers. And if you're looking for something that's both a tablet and a notebook computer in one with really good quality keyboard, nice build, 
Don't mind the Intel Atom CPU, it's definitely worth a look. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the HP NV-X2 and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.